Welcome to the call, everybody. Good to have you. Um, well, we got 19 of you in here so far. This is an unannounced meeting. We're just doing it randomly. In this program, we're going to be talking about uh, how to make every year your best year ever, how to improve every year from this point forward. If you've ever done my Fresh Start program, we talk a lot about that. Now, this is a really important concept because most people, 9%, I think is what they say, will actually fail at their New Year's goals. They won't succeed. They're going to uh, fall down. And very few people in that 9% tend to be the ones that grow the most and are most successful. And there's a couple core reasons for that. So in this video, we're going to be talking about five reasons that you tend to fail. I'm going to go into one bonus reason that will tie back into reason number one and how you can pull all this together. And again, like I said, once you understand these five principles, you can make this your best year ever. So we're going to dive in right away. Now, I used to be, I want to go back a little bit. I used to be a total failure. I used to fail constantly at everything I did. I was constantly setting goals and never following up with on them. I had tons of notebooks and with all kinds of goals in it. And I never uh, actually saw, I never actually looked back at the notebooks. I'd write all these goals down. And then a year later, I'd look at the notebook or I'd find the notebook randomly. And I'd be like, oh, wow, I didn't do any of that. That was because I was constantly changing my mind. I had no sense of focus. I had no sense of direction. I didn't understand how goal setting really worked. I didn't understand the emotional response to goal setting. So we're going to be in these five things we're going to be covering today. We're going to be going through those very things and get, help you to understand the basics, the most solid basics you can have for really becoming great at accomplishing your goals. So we can move this bar a little bit from 9% to something that you accomplish and do on a regular basis okay so let's uh let's dive right in um i see everybody's on the chat awesome guys good having you here we're gonna be doing a chat by the way at the end we're gonna be doing a q a around these principles and i'm gonna be moving it off of youtube so uh there'll be a link landon will post a link in the chat if you guys want to be part of that event not in the chat landon post your email because in the youtube in the future of course there won't be anything but uh but he'll, if you want to be part of that communication, uh, get with Landon and uh, Landon will then give you a link to Zoom and we'll hop on Zoom and have a short talk and I'll be doing a little bit of a Q&A. Let's dive right in. I'm in Columbia, guys, and it's awesome. I love this town. This is my little Colombian apartment here. Um, I got it for the next few days through New Year's. Um, okay. And only about 9% of people ever achieve their goals. And I used to be one of those people. And I had to do a lot of thinking about this and do a lot of deep uh, work. And, and the question is, why do so few people today fail at achieving their goals? Whereas in the past, I believe that people actually were better at getting their goals. And it has a lot to do with the amount of distractions today. Think about it. How much time do you spend on this device right here per day? Uh, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Shorts. And notice that the videos are getting shorter and shorter and shorter that you're watching. So we're just going for tiny little entertainment pieces, little bits of distraction. If you keep looking at this device, the question is, because it's increasing each year, the amount we look at this device, by the end of uh, the next year, where will your, wh how much, what percentage of your day are you going to be spending on this device? What percentage of your life are you going to be spending on, your, on this device? Some people estimate that we could be spending up to a third of our life staring at this little device not out there in the streets, meeting real people in the parks, meeting real women, having a good time, but relating to the world through this, through Instagram, through Tinder, through TikTok, through Instagram, uh, through um, all the other apps that are out there. And that's not really a life, is it? Um, so I want you to think about that for a minute. Is that really a life? Is that something that you want to, at the end of your life, when you look back, and you're on your deathbed and I just watched my mother pass away and, 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 and I watched what she went through and, and you're on your deathbed and you're laying there and you look back over your life. Are you going to be looking back and saying, wow, how much time did I spend on this little device right here? And uh, that's huge when you think about it. And uh, speaking of that, I kind of wrote the talk in this little device too. So. Um, so, and it's really a drug. It's really a drug. If it's not this, it could be something else. We have access today to so many distractions from drugs to alcohol to instant gratification for all kinds of things. So I want to encourage you to take a deeper look at this as we as we go through this. Now, to, I'm going to go into five things you can do to change this reality in this next year to make this next year the best year you've ever had. So we're going to go in. We're going to dive right in right now. What is the first thing? The first thing is the foundation. 
this is the most important thing. I've been doing these advanced six months groups where I work with clients intensively for six months. I go in and do deep, deep work with them and I help to change the way they think and the way they focus. And there's a core thing that I see in all the clients in the six month group that holds them back from achieving their goals, especially with women and money, uh, success and things like that. What happens is that they really, they want the success so bad that they can't have it. They want the success so bad that they can't get it, that they burn out, they get upset, they push, push, push. And then eventually, and this is, we're going to get to exactly what it is here in a second they burn out so much they burn up so many of their uh willpower uh endorphins chemicals as you want to say it you know the willpower in the mind you only have so much willpower that they crash and then they have to recover from the crash now what is it that's happening there well it's a very simple principle and i want to find out if any of you out there are going through this yourselves um they don't enjoy their life just the way it is. They're not happy with their now. Now, let me go deeper into this. Just hold on for a sec, because I'm going to bring this home at the end with the bonus topic and really make you understand it, is that their foundation sucks. If you're building a house, you got to have a really good foundation or that house just sinks right into the ground or it falls apart, right? If you're building anything, you're building muscle, let's say you're skinny fat, you got to build the base muscle, the base structure of the body to really build a nice physique on top of it. The foundation is the most important part to anything you do. Martial arts, learning a foreign language, the basics. And unfortunately, this is what I call the basics. When people want to become very successful in life, they're terrible at the basics. So let's use women, for example, because a lot of you guys are here to meet women. They go online to meet women and, or they, they, want to, they come to me to meet women, but their basics aren't there and they just want the women to be happy. Like if I get women, I'll be happy. That's what they think. But what they find out is when they get the women, they actually become more miserable. They become more unhappy. And so we want to take a deeper look at why that is. And the core of that has to do with the fact that they don't know how to enjoy life without the women. I want to ask you guys in the chat right now, do you know how to enjoy life without women? Do you know how to enjoy life by yourself can you enjoy life taking out the trash can you enjoy life doing your laundry can you enjoy life taking yourself out to dinner if you don't have this foundation and this is the number one goal everybody should have that i enjoy 80 percent of my life i don't need the external world to change for me to be happy and it becomes 10 times if not 100 times harder to get your goals it becomes ridiculously hard to get your goals actually I saw this in my six month groups. I saw a client that came in that was severely unhappy and he was miserable. And every week he'd come back because we're doing deep work and he's saying, you know, but I haven't got a girl, but I haven't got a girl. And I would teach him principles and I haven't got a girl. And I finally had to say, look, the first thing you need to do is stop chasing women and learn to be happy without women. And he didn't like that at first, but he finally did it. We went through some base principles. We started working on meditations. We started working on uh, what we call the heart walks and the vulnerability walks, which I teach in various videos. We started working on learning to, to relate to everyday life better. And it literally took him about two, three weeks to a month. And he was having so much fun with life that his whole reality changed. He went from miserable to extremely happy with no women. And he was shocked. He thought he needed the women to be happy, but in reality, he didn't need the women. And this was an interesting thing because at this point, as he started to establish a really strong baseline, he really started to enjoy life without women. Then we started to work on teaching him how to go back and approach women, meet women, have fun with women. Why, why would that change stuff so much? This works with money, this works with health, this works with everything. Because now, when he gets rejected, he knows how to be happy. When he gets upset, he knows how to be happy. When he fails in business and he doesn't get the money he wanted to return on his crypto investment or whatever he's doing, he actually becomes happy. And he can go back to being happy because he knows how to do it. He knows how to make himself happy. So he doesn't need the women to be happy. Therefore, it is now 10 times easier to teach him how to meet women, have fun with women, flirt with women, 
because they're not his source of happiness, which women hate. When women sense on you that you're your source of happiness, they run away. And this is true with money. This is true with all forms of success. So the number one thing I want to invite you into in the new year is how can I make my now without changing a thing, without making a dollar more than I have right now, the best now possible. And this is what I work on heavily with clients in my Fresh Start program. My, all my, all the work I, I do is teaching you guys how to love big men and love life. So good, good. I say that David wrote in there, I do not. Um, everybody go into the chat right now and write in there. Do you like your now? Do you, can you be happy without getting your goals? And, uh, and go ahead and I only see that David did that. Uh, wait, Red Shirt did that too. Um, there we go. Uh, perfect. I can feel appreciation if I put intention into it. Yeah, in the beginning, it has to be intention. With time, like like uh, anything, it becomes automatic. It becomes easier and easier and easier. Cool. So that's the base principle. Now, let's move on. Dimitri, yes, good. So Dimitri, you're in the right place for the rest of this talk. And the rest of this talk is how to get your goals. Because getting your goals, once you've got this base principle, becomes 10 times easier. And nobody talks about this. Okay, so we talked about the foundation. The next one. When you look at your goals, when you focus on your goals, the, the mind wants to create more of what you focus on. And when I talk to a lot of clients and I ask them what they want to create, if they could create anything, I'm going to be honest, a lot of clients that sign up with me, at least 50%, if not more, will tell me what they don't want as a goal. Well, I don't want women to reject me anymore. That's my goal. Okay. If you women weren't rejecting you anymore, what would it look like? What would it be like? And this idea that how that you got to focus on your goals in the positive, in a way where you can see the end result as in your mind's eye, like a visualization, and you can feel it happening, becomes essential at this point. Most men, literally, and women, spend I would say 60, 70, 80 percent of their time focusing on what they don't want, and very little of it focusing on what they want. This is why they get so frustrated. This is why they get so tired. This is why they get so burned out. It's another reason they burn out. They're running from their now. I talked about that in the first, in the first uh, topic. They have this now that they don't like. And so I want to run from that now. I'm going to talk about what I don't want. And all I'm going to get more of by law of attraction or your reticular activating system, which just expands what you focus on or finds more of what you're focusing on. All you're going to get more of at that point is what you focus on. So if it's pain, if it's suffering, if it's what you don't want, what you're actually doing is placing an order from life, from your subconscious mind for more suffering to get more of what you don't want. I don't want to be rejected. Therefore, what, what the mind hears is, uh, is give me more rejections. Okay. So the next part is when you focus on the positive, you want to focus on it as if it's already happened. I am happy now that I'm meeting more and more women that respond to me in a positive way. I love how more and more women are responding to me and inviting me uh, to hang out with them in a positive way. Um, it's beautiful now that I've made an extra hundred thousand dollars in my life. If you form everything in the affirmative and really focus on it, even if there's resistance, that's a really good thing. The resistance is just the, the subconscious beliefs that are keeping you from having what you want. So as you, as you form every topic in the now and you form it in the positive, you'll feel if you've got a negative mind in this area, you're going to feel resistance. That's what you're going to work on. As you clean up that resistance throughout the year, and you get to where you fall in love with what you've wrote and what you've written down, then it becomes 10 times easier by the end of the year to get your goal because now the internal resistance is gone, which then removes the external resistance from the external world. As you begin to feel more and more like a man that gets accepted by a beautiful woman or that has money in his life in your body, your reticular activating system, that part of your mind that sorts for your reality, goes out and starts to find those opportunities in the world. It starts to see those opportunities all over the place. So number two, I'm keeping it brief. There's a lot more to this, but the base principle is there is write your goals in the now, in the affirmative and write them in the positive. 
This is not positive thinking because what you're going to do is you're still going to acknowledge that you have negative thoughts and then you're just every day as you read the goal, you're going to let go of those negative thoughts. You're not going to try to jam the positive thought in your mind. You're going to let go and release on any resistance to what you wrote. I have uh, three beautiful women in my life that, that invite me to spend time with them on a regular basis. I have an amazing, beautiful girlfriend and uh, and we have a deep, connected relationship. I'm, I'm happy now that I have an amazing, beautiful girlfriend and we have a deep, connected relationship. And then what you're going to do is you're going to release every day all the images, stories and resistance that comes up from experiencing or seeing that image in your mind till it starts to take over your body, till it starts to feel good. Okay, number three, we're going to dive into number three. Number three, I see that some people are writing some questions in there. Uh, we do have the Fresh Start program, Ben, and uh, we'll be talking about that a little bit later. That's if you want to get into the Fresh Start program, it's a great program. I did it a few years ago that really teaches this principle. Um, as far as coaching goes, I only do uh, I, I do uh, long term six month intensive coaching, and I'll talk about that later too. Briefly, I'm not going to go deep into that today. The next part is you got to visualize with your whole body. This is step number three to getting a goal. See, what happens is that a lot of us, we, we visualize in our, in our mind often another universe. We, if I take an image of me being really successful with women or with money or with health or having six pack abs, I can shut my eyes and look up and all of you do this right now, look up and I can see the image of that kind of up here somewhere and it can feel really good. I can see all the women flirting with me. I can see myself having a good time. It feels really nice. And that's a really good thing to do. But at some point, what you want to do is you want to bring that image down into your body. And I talk about this a lot in, uh, in my more in depth works is you want to be able to feel it through your whole body. Uh, even in my ebook, the art of fearless seduction, we talk about this embodiment principle. You want to feel it with your heart. Can you get an endorphin response or a warm feeling in your heart? when you look at the image of what you're creating. I want you to feel it with your gut. That's where your gut brain is. And you can look that up online. That's a powerful instinctive brain that tells you how to go get the goal, right? And so you can feel your gut when you drop it down to the gut and you feel it with your heart, you feel it with your gut. It feels more solid. It feels more real. You want to feel it down in the hips where the turn on is. That's where passion is. That's where, as many of you know, you get really turned on for women and you feel that passion in your loins. You feel that turn on. Well, if you can get or cultivate turn on for your goals, whether it's money or women or health, you're going to take action, right? Because when you get that turn on for something that you love in your life and all, all of you think about something you love in your life, it's amazing how you just want to take action. You want to go for it. Okay. So really think about that a little bit. Think about feeling it through the whole entire body. What I want to do is I oscillate between seeing it up here clear where it's really easy to visualize and bring it down and feeling it through each part of my body all the way down through my legs into the ground. And I want to get my whole body involved in the image and get turned on for it, fall in love with it, get passionate for it. Because the more, and I'm going to talk about this more in the bonus topic, the more you get turned on for your goal, the more you fall in love with your goal, the easier it's going to be to manifest. And if there's a lot of resistance here, and there's a lot of resistance down in the stomach, and there's a lot of resistance low in the body. That's what has to be worked through for you to get your goal. That's what you have to let go of. That's where releasing and letting go and principles like that become so powerful. Meditation becomes so powerful at that point to clean up uh, your resistance. The third thing, and this is a quick video today, I'm trying to make it quick as best I can. The third thing is consistency. You got to work on this every day or at least every week. You can't just put like I used to do. You can't put, write it down in a notebook and then put it away and not see it for a year. I, I think the best people with goals carry them on them. Like I know one guy who was a great manifester. He would always have his goals in his back pocket on paper. I mean, imagine he's sitting on them. He said he would imagine that he's absorbing them through his butt into his body. Um, I tend to review my goals pretty regularly in the morning and not every morning, but most mornings I'll read through them. I say, is this getting better? Even if it's 1% better, I celebrate it. And I just see my goals. Even if there's a hair of me that did something to move in the direction of that goal yesterday or today, I go, yeah, I did that. And I acknowledge it and I celebrate it. I write it down. I, I spend some time really saying me and this goal are 
in a sense, falling in love. Well, I'm falling in love with this goal. That's the main goal is to fall in love with it. Um, and if you think about it, that is the real key because what you love, you're going to want to do all the time. So there's an art form to that. Now, um, to go back through this really quick, you got to love your foundation. You got to love your day to day. You got to have focus on the positive. You got to really understand how to write your goal, see your goal in the positive and release all that resistance. And then you got to have consistency when you work on it. These three things are huge. So number four is you want to visualize, uh, actually I covered visualize with your whole body. So visualize with your whole body was number three and consistency was number four. I got those backwards. Um, so let's go to number, uh, number five. You have to have a deeper moment, I would say, once a week. So I only spend about 10 minutes with my goal in the morning, just reviewing. Did I do this? Did I do that? Yes, yes, yes. Because I want to get to work. I want to get productive. I want to get on to other things. But at least once a week, reflection weekly is really taking time. And I typically do it on Sunday to really reflect at a much deeper level. I pull out my notebook and I take notes and I say, what did I learn this week? What did I release this week? What did I, what am I going to celebrate this week? And I start to work on uh, that stuff every week and I have a journal that I keep all that in, whether it's digital or in person. Now the in-person journals tend to be better because you can leave them out and they can remind you of the goal every day. You leave them in a prominent spot where you say that journal is a representation of my life and it's a major part of my life. And I want to use that journal to reflect on on a regular basis. Um, so reflection once a week becomes very important. That's where I'll do my deepest meditations. For me, I'm, I'm a very spiritual person. Um, and the more I can get my heart tuned in and my turn on tuned in and grounded into the ground, uh, I go into church a lot on Sundays because I'm a big, I'm, I'm not the typical church goer. I don't have the dogmatic religious beliefs, but I love to sit in church and meditate and pray, especially when there's nobody in there. Um, and so I'll sit and reflect on my goals. I'll reflect on my connection to what I believe is divinity. And then I feel my heart open. The whole goal here is to accomplish what I call uh, the bonus step, which goes back to the first step. And on that last, uh, that, that bonus step, so this last principle, why do I go do the spiritual thing once a week? It's because that bonus principle is basically the pain pleasure principle. It's this thing I learned a long time ago in hypnosis. If you really want to succeed in life, you've got to associate your dreams with pleasure. You got to associate tension with pleasure. You got to associate work, the things you're working on with pleasure. The more you get really good at enjoying your life day to day and the action towards your goals with pleasure, the better you're going to become at it. You know, think about these guys that become insane athletes. They love, they, 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 they've, they've associated this almost addictive pleasure to the things that they love to do. A lot of really rich people like Elon Musk love working. They can't wait to go to work every day. They can't wait to go build something new, not because of the money, but because of the pleasure. You see this a lot with people that go to the gym all the time to get jacked. They can't wait. If any of you have met Brad, he can't wait to go to the gym. He usually goes twice a day and he's jacked and he's fit and he's full of life. It just turns, you can feel the turn on in his body. And so when you've got a really solid foundation and you've got turn on for day-to-day -day life, and then you start taking that turn on and you start associating turn on love for each goal on a micro level, you start to literally change your life. You start to literally shift your reality. Does that make sense? And that's the direction that we want to go. Um, so what I want to uh, point out here is that most people, when they set their goals, why well, the reason if we go back to the beginning of this video, that only 9% of people succeed at their goals when they set them every year is because their goals are totally associated with pain and suffering. So they go back to looking at TikTok and Instagram to get away from the pain, to give them a dopamine response. And they don't get anywhere. So the more you learn to reassociate your whole life with pleasure and you understand, and I don't mean like this transient pleasure, a pleasure that lasts and you have systems to keep it in place, to keep the foundation solid, to keep the pleasure operating, the more your whole life is going to radically change. The more you're gonna start to watch your life explode 
year to year. And so I wanted to invite you into this concept and have you really understand that it really is all about being happy now, not an artificial happy, not a temporary happy, not a, I just drank a beer happy, not a, uh, I get to take a break for 10 minutes from my work happy, but a baseline underlying current of happiness that everything is built on. From there, you can begin to get your goals. So with that said, um, I want to invite you guys really quick into if you really want to understand this and you want to go deeper into this principle, I want to invite you into a, what we call a fresh start program. It's only uh, it's on sale right now. It's an online program. It's only 60 some bucks. Um, we'll post a link. I think it's already in the chat to this. If you want to learn more about it, um, there's a link in the chat. Just click on that. And um, and that was a huge program I did many about three years ago, I think that actually had a phenomenal response. Everybody was really happy. And it takes these principles and more and goes much, much, much deeper. Um, it really drives deep into these principles and it's a longer format training. I think it was, I think it was over several days. I can't even remember how several, I can't even remember how long it was. Definitely check out the copy and double check that. But, but it, the response was great. And it was all the stuff I was doing at that time to really manifest my goals, to manifest this dream life, like being here in Colombia right now. I'm about to fly to the mountains and live up at a ski resort in the mountains for, for a month or two. Uh, my life has only gotten better using these principles, especially the understanding at a deep level of this pain pleasure principle. So with that said, I'm going to move this call. Uh, check out the Fresh Start program, it's here. If you guys want to do some Q&A off of this video, you want to talk some more, uh, there'll be a link. We're going to pop a link in here. Grab that link fast because I'm going to log off here in a minute. I'm going to say goodbye. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube in perpetuity or in the future, definitely put a comment below. Uh, there it is. And uh, we're going to go to Zoom. We're going to have a discussion. We can ask all your questions there. Uh, but if you're watching this in the future, definitely put a comment in the video. Um, and we want your comments. And uh, uh, we want. I want to know exactly what you're thinking, what you like, what you didn't like, what you want more of. And uh, so I can help you be the best man possible. This video was a little clunky. It was our first one. Hopefully that makes it better in a lot of ways. Uh, our little comedy of errors. But uh, our first one doing it like this. But uh, in the future, I will tighten it up and I will make it even better for you guys. Okay. Love you all. Uh, remember, only the confident really live and grab the link now if you want to come over to Zoom with us and I'll see you in Zoom.